Hey guys, welcome back to Reserved Investments. And today, I want to have a candid conversation about certain record-breaking sales that are hitting the overall antiques and collectibles trade in the year 2021. So we are going to start off talking about, of course, this probably isn't breaking news to any of you out there, a copy of Amazing Fantasy 15, which features the very first appearance of Spider-Man, just sold for $3.6 million through Heritage Auctions, making it the most expensive comic book sold to date. This particular copy was graded in CGC 9.6 condition. Now, for those unaware, there are currently four copies of this book that have been noted as being graded by CGC, according to the population census, in 9.6 condition. So there are three other copies of Amazing Fantasy 15 out there in 9.6 condition at present time. Now, this is a major sale because obviously this surpassed the sale of the Action Comics 1 that went for a little over $3 million several years back. So this is now the new, the new record-breaking sale in comic books. So we are now at a point in the year 2021 where there are comic books selling for $3.5 six million dollars. Now let me put this in perspective for you. We're still not at the level where rare coins are at, where we have rare coins that are selling for close to 20 million dollars, or even in certain instances, there are other certain antiques out there, certain pieces of artwork, obviously, that sell for tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. So we're not anywhere near those price points, but this does increase the market cap value of comic books on the market by and large. So I just want to make that point very clear. This is a historic sale when it comes to looking at comic books right now in the year 2021. I want to be very careful how I word that because in the grand scheme of things, I don't consider comic books to be truly historic. Comic books are a piece of nostalgia that we all have an emotional attachment to, whether we read the original comic books or we just have an emotional attachment to the characters that they represent. And in the future, I've said this before, my prediction is comic books are going to lose their relevance over time. And if you guys want to argue that point, go back and look up the value of Penny Dreadfuls. And if you don't know what a Penny Dreadful is, you obviously have not watched every video on this channel because I did a specific video on the history of pop culture and I told you guys what Penny Dreadfuls were and are and why they are no longer relevant. And here's a hint. Penny Dreadfuls were the equivalent of comic books back during the Victorian era age. And today, Penny Dreadfuls are not collected. If there are any surviving Penny Dreadfuls, in my opinion, they would probably sell for a very small premium on the secondary market simply because the characters and stories that they introduced are not relevant in the year 2021. Spider-Man is still going strong in the year 2021. So is obviously Batman, Superman, and all these other comic book characters. So that's just something to wrap your head around for those of you that think that comic books are a quote-unquote blue chip investment for decades to come. I really don't see that happening, guys. At some point, we're going to hit a capitulation point and then a lot of these books are going to drop in value. Now, a book like this, this is a top tier collectible. This is something where we're looking at 1% of all collectors are going after. Let's be realistic. Most of the people watching this channel right now are not bidding on a $3.6 million comic book. And if you are, I salute you. I've got nothing against that, my brothers and sisters. That's capitalism at work. Congratulations that you're able to afford a book like that. Now, with that being said, I do want to tie this in to another collecting category because when we look at comic books, there's a lot of transparency, at least on the surface in this market. Notice I did not say that market manipulation and unethical behavior does not exist in the comic book collecting category. Make no mistake, it does. We can spend all day talking about the amount of pressing that goes on behind the scenes with a lot of comic books and collectible comic books specifically. And we can also talk about market manipulation in this collecting field as well, because I assure you, it does exist. That being said, this market has more transparency than that of graded video games at present time. And again, by me saying that, a lot of you guys are going to take that as an attack on Wada Games. I want to be very clear. 
when we are talking about a lack of population reports. I'm not just attacking Wada Games with that statement. I'm also attacking VGA. Because until the Carl Jobst video premiered, VGA and Wada were both content not releasing population reports. VGA did send out a press release where they stated population reports are a priority. They are going to be coming as soon as they redesign their website. So I do salute VGA for making that decision and making that market more transparent and ethical going forward. Now, Wada Games, that's a whole other situation that I'm not going to comment on in this video. But I will state, if you guys recall, I was very hypocritical of the sale of Super Mario 64 that was graded by Wada Games in 9.8 conditions, sold through Heritage Auctions for $1.56 million fairly recently. Well, if you go log on to Golden Auctions, guess what? Another copy of Super Mario 64 graded by Wada in 9.8 condition has surfaced and is being auctioned off. Now, I want to state to you guys, that's pretty much two copies of Super Mario 64 that have hit the market in literally less than a three-month period, three-month time span. Doesn't that tell you that there's going to be a lot more coming to these markets as we sit here in the year 2021? That should cause some of you out there who are defending the market manipulation that is going on in the market for graded video games. That should cause you to have a little bit of pause and say, you know what, maybe there is something here that's going on behind the scenes. If Everything that Carl Jobst talked about, everything that Pat the NES Punk talked about, everything that Sean with Reserved Investments has been talking about for the past two years hasn't resonated with you. Let the fact that in a three-month span, we are seeing a second copy of Super Mario 64 graded by WADA in 9.8 condition hit the market. And I can tell you firsthand, there's going to be more because remember, guys, hint, hint. I am a consultant in the antiques and collectibles trade. There are people that come to me and say, hey, Sean, I'm sitting on this particular item, or I have X number of copies of this, or here's a picture of my collection. You know, tilt your head to the lower right. You're going to see a factory sealed case of this particular item or collectible. One of the biggest mistakes we make as collectors, and I want to speak to you all in general on this talking point, we have an emotional attachment to these items. So we tend to overvalue a lot of these collectibles on the secondary market by and large. That's why I do understand, as much as I don't agree with this, I do understand why certain people who have a thing for video games come to me and say, Sean, you don't understand. It's Super Mario. It's a cultural icon. I get where you're coming from. But I've said this before. The market for antiques and collectibles is very small. It's a niche market. When we compare it to the real estate market, when we compare it even to Wall Street, to the financial markets, most people will never in their life spend more than $1,000 on an antique or collectible, whether that's a video game, whether it's a comic book, whether it's a vintage toy, whether it's a rare coin, whether it's a piece of currency. Please be careful in these markets, guys. Please use your head. Please use logic. Please use common sense. I have literally had to spend a lot of my time this past month helping Timmy's get out of certain predicaments that they put themselves into because they think a lot of these markets are going to go to the moon and then continually go up from there. That is not how these markets work over the long term. Term. If you are speculating in these markets, do it responsibly. Understand that as Gordon Gecko famously said in Wall Street, money never sleeps. Speculation is the mother of all evils. If you are getting involved in speculation, you must understand the risks. And the minute you make money on that speculative purchase, get out of it. Sell it to the next person that wants it more than you. The greater fool theory is completely in effect in these markets. It's it's live and well. If you don't know what the greater full theory is, please look it up. That's how I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Have a great day. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.